Say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning, and welcome to St. Joseph Co-Cathedral for our annual celebration of the Blue Mass. My name is Chief Alexander Barnes of Nickel State University Police Department. The Mass receives its name from the blue uniforms customarily worn by police officers. In addition to law enforcement officers, we ask God to bless the work of firefighters, military personnel, and emergency responders. In John chapter 15, verse 13, Jesus says, Greater love has no man than this, 
let a man lay down his life for his friends. Every day our community protectors risk their lives for the sake of others. Today, we also pray for those that have died in the line of duty, died in the time, during the time of their working for their agency, or died after a lifetime of service, share fully in eternal life. Even as we remember the deceased who worked for the protection agencies, we also remember in our prayers today, Mr. Nolan Zarang, father of Chief Brian Zarang of the Thibodeau Police Department, who was to deliver the opening commentary at today's Mass. May Mr. Zarang likewise share in the gift of eternal life. The Blue Mass is usually held annually on or near September 29th, the Feast of the Archangels, one of whom, St. Michael, is the patron of community protectors. The care that those in the protection agencies exercise reflects God's protective care over his people. After the homily, I will invite family members or department members who are representing the deceased to come forward and stand in the sanctuary. As we continue to gather for worship, let us stand and sing, O oh God, help our, oh God, our help in ages past from your mass program. Thank you. Please rise.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the friendship and communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning, everybody. A very warm welcome to you all this morning to celebrate this wonderful moment of lifting all that you have ministered to and all the lives you've touched since we last assembled here. We lift it all to God in prayer, that despite all that appears wrong in our world out there in the greater scheme, behind all of that there is so much good perpetually being done by women and men like you and those you represent here this morning. It's an extraordinary privilege to preside over this Holy Mass with you as we give thanks to God that each one of you and those you represent fulfill your vocation with such diligence and without any respect to creed or color of the life you preserve, the life you save, and the community that you protect by your presence and your service. We give thanks to Almighty God too for those whom we remember as we will name them later on in this Mass whose candles we would like to remind ourselves that we are all on a singular journey. Our God binds us together when the colors were brought forward this morning, you will notice that one of the flags was the flag of the papacy, of the Pope, to remind us that all power we have is a gift from God, and that that power is best exercised in service to our community. So when we pledge our allegiance of one nation under God, and we bring it to mass like this, for this beautiful moment we remember, we are a great nation, we have a great heart, we have a great gift of charity that's lived out in the service and ministry of women and men like you and those you represent. On behalf of the clergy of the Diocese of Homo Thibodeau and all the communities that we serve like you serve, we thank you for your service and we lift all with you our prayer, assuring you that even though we only do this once a year, you are held in prayer in all our masses every Sunday in our various communities. With that in mind, we commence the celebration of this Holy Mass by bowing our heads together. We call to mind our sins and failings. We ask for the grace of forgiveness. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring all of us assembled here this morning into everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will.
let us pray. And we include in our prayers this morning the suffering communities in Florida as a result of Hurricane Ian. And we give thanks for the numbers of our people who have already been on their way over there from Louisiana to assist in their recovery and rescue programs. We keep them in our hearts and our prayers, knowing only full well what they are now experiencing. O oh God, who dispose in marvelous order ministries both angelic and human, graciously grant that our life on earth may be defended by those who watch over us as they minister perpetually to you in heaven. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. We sit now to hear God's word. A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. As I watched, thrones were set up, and the Ancient One took his throne. His clothing was bright as snow, and the hair on his head as white as wool. His throne was flames of fire, with wheels of burning fire. A surging stream of fire flowed out from where he sat. Thousands upon thousands were ministering to him and myriads upon myriads attended him. The court was convened, and the books were opened. As the visions during the night continued, I saw one like a son of man coming on the clouds of heaven. When he reached the Ancient One and was presented before him, he received dominion, glory, and kingship. Nations and peoples of every language serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that shall not be taken away. His kingship shall not be destroyed. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.
A reading from the book of Revelation. War broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels battled against the dragon. The dragon and its angels fought back, but they did not prevail. And there were no longer any place for them in heaven. The huge dragon, the ancient serpent, who is called the devil and Satan, who deceived the whole world, was thrown down to earth, and its angels were thrown down with it. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, now have salvation and power come, and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his anointed, for the accuser of our brothers is cast out, who accuses them before our God day and night. They conquered him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. Love for life did not deter them from death. Therefore, rejoice, you heavens, and you who dwell in them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Thank you. We stand to read the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and said to him, Here is a true Israelite. There's no duplicity in him. Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? Jesus answered and said to him, Before Philip called you, I saw you under the fig tree. Nathanael answered him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered and said to him, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than this. And he said to him, Amen, amen. I say to you, you will see the sky open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. <clears throat>
I was ordained a priest in 2003, 2004, I'm losing my mind now, and I was assigned to La Rose as my first assignment. One night I was called to St. Anne's Hospital on a sick call, and I came to the hospital and took care of that individual, praise God. On my way down, I decided because I'm an Irish man and like to drive a little over the limit when no one is looking, that I would take 308 to La Rose. And I did so. The road was quiet and I got to enjoy my drive until, unfortunately at the time I thought, a squad car of Sheriff Craig Weber's troop comes tearing up the other side of 308 and decides he didn't like the speed I was going at. Grinds to a halt and does a U-turn. Follows me down Highway 308 and as you know, there's very little place in 308 to pull over on the shoulder. So I kept going for as long as I could hoping he would change his mind. He didn't, and I pulled in. And acting, knowing that offense is the best form of defense, I jumped out of the car and went back to him and said, this was 11 a.m. At 11 p.m. at night, he said, officer, are you following me? He said, father, I am. Do you know what speed you were going at? I said, no, I, I was enjoying the drive. Well, he says, listen to me now, father. I'm going to let you off this time. But if you keep driving like that, you'll be with the angels before you know where you are. Stay on the ground and drive like the rest of us. We have a speed limit in Lafourche. I keep it ever since, Sheriff. That's just to remind us that the generosity of spirit that prevails in your various ministries is something that's not reflected on. This morning's homily will touch into real life in a few quick points, and I won't delay you too long. But I want to emphasize as a priest of Jesus Christ representing this diocese, that I am not making any political statement when I make the following comments, which I will make. You see this morning, because the solemn mass, we treat the book of the gospel with great reverence. We carry it solemnly off the altar, which is the altar of sacrifice on which Jesus Christ gave his life for all of us, that we might know the meaning of life and the definition of life and the purpose of life, which is, of course, to take us from this life through death to everlasting life and the glory of our risen Savior. The book is then processed and incensed because it represents the Word of God. And when it's proclaimed, God himself is speaking. As it happens, the readings of today's Mass are rather complex readings. So my best recommendation about the first reading and the second reading to you this morning is, forget it. Too complicated. But here's the deal. Our policeman or our policewoman who stands beside someone who's the victim of an accident on the roadside and they're a nervous wreck and they're falling asunder. The word of kindness, the word of support, the word of calming, that's the word of God. That's the word we reverence when you heard in this gospel. You are the son of God, Jesus Christ said Nathaniel. People see Christ in you and through you with those few kind words. The fire departments, we have a fire of someone's home is burning down and the family are in deep distress watching this flame and the fireman or firewoman whispers a kind consoling word in their ear. That's the word of God made flesh in you. The first responder who pushes you into an ambulance and charges up the road with sirens blazing to the hospital or the nearest facility, is telling you all the time words of reassurance and words of consolation. That's the word of God made flesh in you. So my sisters and brothers of Jesus Christ, representing the wonderful women and men that you do, in a nation which has become so divided, in a nation in which you are now almost condemned for being a police officer, in which the good of the police departments of our nation are never reflected in national media, but always the criticisms and the representation of what's done to be negative and even destructive. Remember the good that's going on all the time, and which you never flinch and never waver, which builds and gives security in all our communities. We appreciate that, we know that, we understand that, and we are deeply, deeply grateful for that. The same thing with most public servants now, there seems to be this continuing onslaught that public service and public servants are the worst in the world. Take our FBI, for example, without going into greater detail. 
to have these wonderful women and men who put their lives at risk on a daily basis, like you all do in various ways, challenged openly on national media by senior politicians as being unworthy of our support, putting their lives and their families at risk of abuse, if not more serious, danger, is an outrage and an offence against the good that you do and the good that you represent. So when you come to this Mass on this annual event, which we began after 9-11, remember, when the greatness, the greatness of the sacrifice made by the New York Fire Department, Police Department and first responders was in full evidence. And I know, and you know, because you're trained this way and your hearts say this, that the very same thing would happen right here if we had a major, major disaster here. No matter where it is, your first response is to worry about the person you're going to rescue or talk with or console. So let no one take from you the greatness and the goodness of what you do. So we celebrate this remembrance of all the good that's been done by our people that you represent on this feast of the archangels. Who are the archangels? They're simply messengers of God. And we have three that we name that are the most prominent. There are seven who are named, but three are most prominent and best known. The first one is Michael. Michael represents our police department. Michael is the one who comes to the rescue to protect the society from attack, to protect community from someone who wishes to do harm to a family, an individual, or a whole community. Blessed Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. The battle for virtue, the battle for justice, the battle for peace is an ongoing battle against those who wish to be destructive, troublesome, and even damaging to our names and even our bodies and our minds. Michael the Archangel represents our police people, for which we are so grateful. Gabriel, the messenger of God, who came to this little woman Mary and asked her, would you be the mother of the Savior if God asked you to be? And her beautiful answer, let it be done to me according to your word. Gabriel delivers the message. Every time a phone goes off in a fire department, and you answer the call. You don't stop to dwell on it. You don't call a committee meeting. You don't have a reflection and a conversation with someone in the other station. You jump on board, you hit the road, you respond to the call of need, and your sirens become the voice of God, of consolation and hope when you're heard coming up with your sirens blazing. People breathe again. Here they come. We're going to be saved. You are there to be saving people. Gabriel. The Archangel is your representative. Pray to him. Bring him with you in every trip you make. And then Raphael, the first responder. Raphael, the man who went to Tobit, who was blind because he lost trust in God and thought that life would never be the same again. And God sent Raphael to him and gave him a small test, which when he passed, his sight was restored. Raphael, the consoler, the assurer, Every first responder is a consoler by nature and is sure in your words and is sure in your deeds that all will be well. So those three angels are not just fictitious names. They represent the reality of God present in our world. And that's why we use the phrase so often casually and don't think about it. But I invite you this morning as I conclude these few remarks to think about it every day. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and his name is Jesus. Each one of you, led by the image of these angels, becomes the Word made flesh in the situations I just defined, always there primarily to console, to comfort, to protect, and save, and serve. And we thank you for that, and all those whom you represent here this morning, for that incredible gift of grace which you are to our communities. And I need to end on a, a small, very personal note, and I have his permission to do so. What a joy it is to have Chief Weber here with us this morning, back in full health. This man is one of our best and a great personal friend of mine. And when he became ill unexpectedly and had essentially a widowmaker heart attack only just a few short weeks ago and was rushed to hospital, he knows everything because now he's experiencing his own situation from the other side. And immediately, in this so-called world in which religion and the state are supposed to be separate, his department put out the message, pray for our sheriff. 
What a wonderful gesture it is to say that the spontaneity of our faith came through. And he's the first one to say, I heard those prayers. The doctors and nurses had the experience of those prayers. And today he's restored to the whole of his health. Would you welcome back with me, my friend, Sheriff Craig Weber. Welcome back, Sheriff. And I know he thanks you sincerely for the wonderful support he experienced during his illness. Finally, my sisters and brothers, again, on behalf of all of our priests, all of our deacons who serve at the altar of God, daily and especially on Sundays, you are always in our prayers. And those you represent are always being reflected in our prayers because you are the assurance that the people we pray with and bury and minister to, celebrate marriages with and baptisms are safe. When you turn up to escort a funeral, when you turn up to make room for a wedding, the wonderful services that you give are the ones that never make the headlines, but they're the ones that make people's lives worth living. You make lives worth living. May all of you and your families experience in your hearts and your homes that love of Christ, that ministry of Christ, that care of Christ that you offer and afford to everybody. Thank you for your service and God bless you all. And now I invite us to stand for our prayers of the faithful. At this time, we invite members of the families of the deceased who are to be remembered in our prayers today to come forward into the sanctuary. Brothers and sisters, we gather here in God's presence this day to be nourished in word and in sacrament. We ask our Heavenly Father to grant the petitions we now present. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. For our president, governor, legislators, judges, and all in service to the common good, that through the gift of heavenly wisdom, they may work to uphold religious freedom and conscious protection for all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That as Christ's faithful community on earth, we will seek the greater things of this world, especially justice and dignity for all God's people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That those charged with public safety will be vigilant and steadfast in the protection of their communities and country. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the families of those who protect our communities and countries will be blessed and comforted because of their commitment and generosity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. That all who serve the community as first responders will be protected in their work and will see their duties as living out God's call for shaping the world for good. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all first responders and military personnel will be graced with patience, clarity of mind, and respect for human life while performing their duties under stressful conditions. We pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. That those throughout the world, and especially in Terrebonne and Lafouche parishes, who have lost family or property during natural disasters will be supported and helped in their recovery, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who wish to commit acts of violence may be turned by grace toward more peaceful ways of responding, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That racial tension in our society will be eased through our observance of Jesus' command to love our neighbors as ourselves, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That sick and aged public servants will always give thanks for their years of dedicated service and know the gratitude of their community, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our coastline will be protected from further diminishment, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who died in the 9-11 attack and our local law enforcement officers, firefighters, emergency responders, and military personnel who died in the line of duty while serving the protection agencies or a lifetime of service will be granted the fullness of eternal life, especially from the Homa Fire Department, retired District Chief Jerry Labou, from the Homa Police Department, John Bogiano, Austin Bush, from the Lafouche Fire District Number One Volunteers, James Elmer, Jimmy, Mr. Bradford, Bradford, John, Jojo, Lirette, from the Terrebonne Parish Sheriff's Office, Sergeant Pierre Van Dorn, Deputy Glenn Abair, Lieutenant Linda Lirette. Captain General Smith from the Little Caillou Fire Department, Brian LaBeouf, Marvin Thibodeau, <coughs> from the Lafouche Parish Sheriff's Office, Dora Champagne, Deanna Dufresne. Lieutenant Paul Lirette, Jr. John Sutton. Larry Widell. From the Thibodeau Volunteer Fire Department, Protector Fire Company Number 2, Olin Benoit. Keith LeBlanc, Sr. Jackie Jaco Nakam, Nathan J. Oob, from the Thibodeau Volunteer Fire Department, South Thibodeau Fire Company, Robert Guiat Sr., Robert Bobby Abair. Murphy Morva from the Thibodeau Volunteer Fire Department, West Thibodeau Fire Company, Delton Prejean. Blessed are you, Lord God of mercy, 
who through your Son gave us a marvelous example of charity and the great commandment of love for one another. Send down your blessings on these your servants who so generously devote themselves to helping others, some of whom have already sacrificed their lives in the service of others. When they are called on in times of need, let them faithfully serve you in their neighbor and grant eternal rest to all the faithful departed, especially those we have remembered today. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated.
Pray, my sisters and brothers in Jesus Christ, that this bread and this wine, my sacrifice and yours, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We offer you a sacrifice of praise, O Lord, humbly entreating that as these gifts are borne by the ministry of angels into the presence of your majesty, so you may receive them favorably and make them profitable for our salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts gathered round this Eucharistic table of Jesus Christ, let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, and to praise you without end in your archangels and angels. For the honor we pay the angelic creatures in whom you delight, redounds to your own surpassing glory. And by their dignity and splendor, you show how infinitely great you are to be exalted above all things through Christ our Lord. Through him the multitude of angels extols your majesty, and we are united with them in exultant adoration as with one voice we acclaim. sit for the Eucharistic prayer. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it, then gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For it is through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. in faith this morning we stand now to make our own the great prayer our Savior Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with spirit, let us now offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you all.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord. Communion will be distributed under both species this morning, this special mass. So we invite those who wish to receive Holy Communion to come forward through the center aisle and to return to seats by the side aisle to keep the flow of traffic. Thank you.
Please stand. Having been nourished with heavenly bread, we beseech you humbly, O Lord, that drawing from it new strength under the faithful protection of your angels, we may advance boldly on our way to salvation. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before the final blessing, we have some short announcements. There will be a reception in the St. Joseph Life Center and we invite family members of the deceased for whom we pray today to take one of the candles which was prepared for their deceased loved one. You will find their names printed on the candles. Thank you. And again, I thank you for your time and for your prayerfulness and your presence with most of all and all those you represent for your service to our communities. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless each and every one of you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our celebration is over. Let's go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.